What's up guys, today I wanna to show you another video editing software option, comparing it to Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, and even DaVinci Resolve. A lot of you probably don't need a lot of those professional features, and you don't wanna spend as much money, which is why I wanna show you Wondershare Filmora. This is a awesome video editing software, and I've collaborated with this company before. We've done live streams together and so forth. So let's jump into the software, and let's see if this is something that you would need in your workflow. Okay, so as soon as we open up Wondershare Filmora, similar to other softwares, we have this project window. We can select either it being the 16 by nine aspect ratio, which is traditional widescreen, one by one for Instagram, nine by 16 for portrait or for Instagram stories and TikToks, four by three and 21 by nine for extra widescreen CinemaScope. So you right off the bat have all of these options to reformat your project depending on you know, the type of video that you're working on. So I'm gonna start off by using the 16 by nine wide screen. So I like how they incorporated that straight off the bat. We're gonna click on new project, but also notice that they have these other options too, screen recorder, instant cutter, AI stylizer, and so forth. But I'm just gonna work on my own project for right now. So I'm gonna click on new project, and here it is right now. And you know, just looking at this software, I can tell you right now that it looks very similar to Adobe Premiere Pro. It looks more similar to that than it does Final Cut, but it is much more simplified, especially when it comes down to how everything is labeled and where you can find everything. So on the left right here, you'll find your file explorer and project media. So this is where you're gonna dump all of your video clips, everything that you're gonna use to edit. So let's start off by dragging and dropping some media clips right here. And this footage was shot on my Sony A7S Mark III. So this is raw footage. It wasn't pre-processed or dropped uh, in resolution. And by the way, I'm editing on the new MacBook Pro M1 Max. So we're gonna test out how this software does with that new Apple hardware. So that's really important. All right, so let's find some video clips. All right, so here we are. It's loading the uh, thumbnails, which is normal. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag and drop uh, one of these files over here. And if you notice, the resolution frame rate of this media does not match the project settings. This is very similar to Adobe Premiere and Final Cut. So I'm just gonna reconform the project so it matches the video clip. So I'm gonna click on 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second. That's perfectly fine. I'm just trying to show you the different features of this software. So let's check playback. Let's see the performance of playback. And I'm gonna mute this audio just by dragging down this uh, volume here, very similar to any other software that I've seen. And let's just play back the uh, footage. A little bit choppier than Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's still very easily editable. It's a lot better than what things used to be before the M1 Max, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, let's go ahead and drag and drop some other clips right here. This is actually shot uh, with one of the companies I work with called Rizvani. I talk about them a lot because it's such a cool company. They make these ballistic armor uh, trucks and cars, so really cool. Uh, so right off the bat, we just have hard cuts between these clips. You can zoom in and out of the timeline just by clicking and dragging your mouse over here. And what Final Cut doesn't have that this software has is uh, the track properties. So you can right away mute this track just like this. You can lock this track so you won't be able to really change things here. As you can see, I can't change anything on this track. That's something I wish Final Cut had instead of that magnetic timeline and I'm just undoing my changes here. And down below we have the audio track, so if you want to put in, let's say, some music or anything like that, you have that option as well. I also wanna see how this software performs with multiple tracks stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna just drag and drop some more clips and place them on top. And I'm just dragging over, and I just wanna see 
what we're dealing with in Filmora. As you can see, we can make basically unlimited tracks here, as many as you would want. So I like that a lot. Uh, let me check playback really quick. And playback seems to be slowing down just a bit. Yeah, so this is where the software kind of struggles, uh, comparing it with Adobe Premiere and uh, Final Cut Pro. But if you're looking at this type of software, you're not gonna be really working on the most complex projects. So I think two to three tracks would be just enough. Uh, so that's how everything looks like when it comes down to making tracks. But if you have a more powerful computer, let's say you might be able to get away with editing this in real time. But I just wanna show you the options that you have when it comes down to adding multiple tracks and stacking them on top of each other. Now let's look at some of the effects of the software and see what it actually can do. I think the software will be really good for those of you who are in social media and just wanna make quick edits. So let's have a closer look. Okay, so now I have different video clips in here in my project timeline. This is actually shot on my iPhone. So if you're doing a lot of different vlogging and so forth, uh, let's see if this software would be something that you're more interested in using. I really want you to get used to the overall user interface of this software. And yeah, let's go ahead and start working with some of the effects, some of the transitions. I'm gonna import multiple clips here. And now let's go over to transitions and let's see what things they offer. Now what's different with Filmora comparing it to Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro is that they have their own server with downloadable transitions and effects. So whenever they release a new effect or transition, you don't have to rely on third-party plugins, which is really neat. So let's see what all of this stuff is here. Just drag and drop it. It's gonna download the transition and let's see what it can do for us. Cool, all right. So that's interesting. I don't know if I would use it for my vlog, but it's a very smooth and cool looking transition. We can also look at the subcategories on the side here, especially the ones for social media. So if you're posting a lot of Instagram content or TikTok content, you can add these types of transitions as well. Yeah, and if you're making uh, Facebook ads or Instagram ads, if you have like a little ad agency company and you want something quick and easy to edit with, you could definitely consider using software like this. So let's click around here. Let's see how well it does. Yeah, it plays back the transitions extremely smoothly. Uh, I noticed that this clip is actually filmed vertically. So let's go ahead and see how we can fix that. So I'm just gonna click on the clip. I'm gonna go to show properties. And here's where we can rotate the clip and readjust its parameters. So I'm actually gonna set it to 90 degrees. And then we're just gonna scale up. So this is very similar to Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, and so forth. So if you ever shoot vertically, you can always reframe it. There is a little bit of lag, I did notice. So that's something you might have to get used to, but it's still editable. So here are some effects right here. I found this cool clip of me riding my unicycle. You can just drag and drop some of these effects just to see how they would look on your video clip. Okay, so this looks like some light leaks, which I really enjoy. And let's see how we can adjust the parameters of this effect. So I'm gonna right click, show properties, and we're gonna look at the video effects option right here. And we can just decrease the effect and adjust it. And now it's less noticeable, but less distracting as well. And just looks really pretty, I like that a lot. And the other options in the show properties section here, you can add a bunch of different things here such as motion tracking, which is relatively new to Filmora. So you can do object tracking. We'll test that feature in just a moment. So here we have some different footage here that I was shooting with one of my clients, Abigail, for a fashion shoot. And this is Sony a7S III footage. And I wanna test out some of these options here such as motion tracking and stabilization. 
I'm going to go ahead and select motion tracking. And as you notice, very similar to other pro software, we have this motion tracking box. And I'm going to track Abby's head here. And let's see how well it tracks. I'm going to resize the box. There's a little bit of lag here. So just note about that. And we're going to analyze and see how well it tracks. Start tracking and let's see how well it does. And it tracks very fast. So I like that. So it tracked her face flawlessly and it did it very quickly, very similar to Final Cut Pro Speed. So I like that a lot. All right, so that's the motion tracking feature. We also have chroma key and uh, stabilization options here. So if you want to stabilize the footage, especially since it being handheld, you can increase the smoothness. You can even change the type of edge processing. So you have reflect, extend, and tile. So if you actually zoom out of stabilized footage, you'll start to see distortions and weird patterns. These are the types of patterns that they offer. So I like how you can change this feature. I haven't seen this before on Final Cut Pro, so that's really unique. So now we have some green screen footage. Let's see how well this software keys out green. Now this is a very well lit green screen, so it shouldn't have any problems. So let's go ahead and check chroma key. And boom, it keyed out just fine. Now let's drop in the background and see how well it really did. So I'm just gonna insert this image here and we'll see how well this software keys out the green. Very nice, okay, I like it. All right, so you got a very good chroma keying engine in this software. So for those of you who are looking for software that can get the job done, uh, that you know doesn't necessarily have the most professional features, but just enough to to get your social media posts done and your 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 ads done. Uh, I think Filmora does a very decent job, and it's definitely a good budget option for those of you who are even just trying to learn video editing. Because Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, those are quite the investment, and Adobe Premiere Pro is a subscription-based model, so you're gonna have to be paying every month. While this, you have the option of paying every month or one flat fee. And if you're curious, this is the current pricing of Filmora. So 80 bucks for a one-time fee, and you get all of these options right here. So if you are interested in Filmora, check out the link down below. Let me know what you guys think. I do recommend easier software in the beginning just so you can get used to uh, video editing and how things are. And because this software looks very similar to all the other professional softwares, this is definitely how you train your brain for the professional world. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Peace.